we 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 could say this to our face is blue that mm. and we do say it to our academy members how important it is to restrain your camel for vet care every course we do involves a, res, a vet care, a vet restraint yep. basically yep uh, but we want to hear from you what that means for you if a camel is is restrained properly and if a camel isn't restrained properly yeah oh, the, the difference it is, it is everything it is everything It is everything. It is everything. I can only, a vet is only as good as the animal's restraint. Mm. I can't do anything. If, if you can't get near the camel, I can't get near the camel. I, I've often gone out to people and I get it. They love their camels. They're cute. They get me out and I'm like, oh, okay, so can you go catch him? And they go, no, 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 he's not, he's not tame. And I'm like, well, I'm not the camel whisperer. Like I don't, I can't, I'm not Crocodile Dundee who can just get the camel like this yeah, well, and it comes with it. <laughs> so in turn, and I think that's why a lot of vets, they, they often go, oh, camel, you know, like, oh, my God, is because yeah. they get there and they don't know how to do it. If One of the only ways I've been able to um, really nail some incredible techniques and medicine in camels is because I now only work on restrained camels. Mm -hmm. I, can't, I yeah. can't do it. I can't, if I can't take a blood test, I can't, I can't see what's wrong with your camel. Yeah. If I can't touch it, I can't see what's wrong with your camel. Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter. So many times people say, oh, can you just have a look at it over the fence? And I feel like saying, well, Stevie Wonder could see what I could see over the fence. Yeah. Like you need, like, it's not going to work. Yeah. I can't tell uh, you anything. And, on, and I've mm. seen vet care gone wrong. For instance, through sedation, through a dart gun. Yeah. Yeah. Like Jesus. Terribly wrong. Yeah. Because, you know, what's your experience? Tell us. No, no, no. So I will never. So I, I, I mean, a dart gun, there's a time and a place. I think if you're in Kenya. Um, no. If, um, <laughs> the, if you are, brilliant. you can't, a lot, so many, it's so funny. And I laugh now too. Um, when people say, oh, haven't you got a dart gun? And you're like, it's not really a safe way to go because then you've got no control. It's about knowing better, right? It's about control. If you dart something that's 600 kilos and it just goes thwack yeah. onto the ground, you've got the potential for that animal to break its, dislocate a hip, I've seen that. dislocate its neck, break its shoulder, and you're screwed from the start. Yeah. The yeah. other thing is then from the vet's point of view, I'm basically trying to diagnose someone who's in a coma Yes. yes. Like they're not telling me Jack, like I can't yes. do anything. Um, and if it's an internal medicine problem, if you've got a camel that's just sick and not well, it's, and there's no obvious injury, mm -hmm. um, me darting it and having it anesthetized is not going to do anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's not going to give me any feedback. It's all about, I always say the owners know exactly what's like, they know if their camel is sick, they may not know where or what, and nor do you as the vet until you start looking at it. Yeah. But if an owner comes and says, my camel is not well, you have to listen to them because you guys know the most because they're your, they're part of the family, right? Yeah. So from darting, I don't, I don't do it. I think for, I mean, I'm fortunate now if I go out to large camel um, properties, um, I've designed a camel crush. I've designed a camel, how to move camels through a set of yards and a camel vet crush. So now I can access every point of the animal. I can do a cesarean. I can bandage legs. I can fix mastitis. I can preg test. I can do dentals, um, the whole bit. But not everyone's got that. And yeah. my recommendation to you is please, if you can just be owners and get your ham camels to hush, oh, happy day. Yeah. Happy day. Because then there's a little, I'm sure you know this and forgive me, I'm not great with my ropes, but if you can just um, tether the camel, once it's hooshed down, even if it's a bit bitey and a bit snaky with its neck, I can make a halter in two seconds flat yeah. and I can tie its head to, the, to like one of its legs yeah. and it's pissed off but it's not going to, it's not going to hurt itself. Yeah, exactly. It's we so have, we have a, a, what we call the, the vet. The vet the tie. Vet, the vet tie oh, down. perfect. Thank you. And, I appreciate that. It's the front legs and back legs so that you're perfect. not at the, the risk of kicking. There yep. is also a method of getting the halter and the halter rope 
and uh, and restraining the head to one side. I mean, you have to be onto it because, of course, you know, the camel can yep. go ahead and snake and roll onto its neck and that sort of stuff, which could cause problems. But at least, as you say, it's not anaesthetised by any measure whatsoever. I don't you know. I mean... That's right. I'm happy to anaesthetise and sedate. I've got lovely protocols for that and I'll get yep. onto that in a second. But I can't do that until I see your animal is fit to give it an anaesthetic. Like yeah, I, yeah. I can't, I'm not going to anaesthetise something that I've given no, I haven't checked to and start it's off with. such a good point. And I want everyone to hear this again, um, that a vet is only as good as the restraint of the camel. So, and this is why we, we really started to, to work mm. together because you have the scientific stuff and we, we do all the camel training. And yeah, totally. Stuff. So um, I remember when, when we told you that, you know, we, we have a restraint for the vet stuff and you were like, oh, well, that's great. That just saves the day sort of thing. Oh, but it's, so many people do not. And it's a really good point that if you have a camel, you are responsible for anything that that camel does or does not do. Mm, and mm. that is not from a controlly perspective per se. It's from knowing your camel, being connected, knowing yeah. how to do this, knowing how to sit the camel, knowing you know, all of that stuff. And it is also your job to cement that training. Um, it, it is so, so important. It is so important. And you do it before only... the vet gets there. That's it. You can only get some good stuff so many people um and i've got most you know most of my friends who are vets that are like oh my god i've got to see a camel why do you do this how can you work with these things um but they get there and the camel's in the paddock not only are you paying for that time but yeah. like you said it, you've got to like we are there we are focusing on okay what is wrong with this camel what is wrong i don't i don't know all the i know the vet rope ties but i don't know the all the other stuff i want to be able to come with a restrained animal, sit there, get a good history from the client, a good right. history from the client. I want, you know, the client's got to bring to the vet consult just as much as the vet's got to bring to the vet consult to get that's something right. out of it, yeah. okay? Yeah. The client's got to come with a restrained animal, and I get that that's hard, um, a history and, and also some patience because it's not like I'm finding now with shows like, Bondi bed or SVU or whatever. Everyone wants like an instant answer. Yes. I can't give you that. I need to. I need to take tests. I need to sit back. I need to look, uh, take it all in, have a think about it, and then I can give you an answer. Obviously, if it's an emergency, it's different. But um, honestly, a, a, a camel that is restrained means I get to come in, kiss the camel, cuddle the camel, take the camel selfie. And then do my physical examination. <laughs> no, exactly. Look, honestly, Maggie, it's so much on the same page as what we've always been on. Thank goodness, yeah. uh, because um, I mean, you know, you're not interested if the camel can go ahead and do dancing on one leg, um, no, or you know, no. or any of the tricks or anything. <laughs> you're just not interested in that. You're interested as the vet. Uh, and this is, you know, a message to everyone that's listening here. This is what your vet is wanting. I is really appreciate that. Yeah. Restrained. Okay. And I know that there's a lot of uh, different training uh, methods out there, um, but we, we make sure that in our training method that we do have this restraint capacity inside the training method. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we don't make any excuses for this whatsoever. In fact, we're proud of this because it does mean that people such as yourself can mm. come in and have a look at our camel and get the best treatment for the camel because we've trained it into the being yeah, restrained. Yeah. And that's the thing about what they do into it because that's it. Like from our perspective, there's no point in tying a camel for the first time and then the camel screaming its guts out because it feels so stuck and it thinks it's going to be there for the rest no. of its life. And that's it's why we, step by step we train them into this vet tie so they become so comfortable with it that they're like, oh, oh well, this is just another is tie. <laughs> That's exactly the point. So because if the first time you are, you are tying your camel is also the first time that the vet okay. is seeing it, mm. everybody's going to get covered in spit. Yes. Someone's getting bitten. Um, so, and the camel, most importantly, is stressed off its mind. Yes. <laughs> In that stress response, they shut down any little nuanced response they have, which makes it harder for us to diagnose what the hell's going on. Okay. So their heart rate's up through the roof. Now, is that heart rate up through the roof because it's anemic or is yeah. that heart rate up through the roof because it's pissed off? Yeah. So it's, if, if I've got a camel that's sitting there and is just like, oh, here she is again, okay. So do it a couple of times before, the, um, before your vet gets there 
Um, mm. And you'll have a great experience and the vet will want to come back. Exactly. So it, it's and like, with, where, um, yeah. yeah, it's like it's SeaWorld. The first thing that they do is train. Is that, is that bad to mention SeaWorld? Anyway, but the first thing that people do is that they train the animal, the dolphin, to lie on its back so it can be ultrasounded by the vet. Yeah. 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 It's the first yeah. thing. Like you can't, like how else am I going to ultrasound a dolphin? Yeah. Like you've got to, <laughs> it's the same as with camels. The only way that I've been able to develop all these cool techniques that I've got now with camels and castrating and all the surgical options is because I've had access to really good camel restraint and I can't do it without it. Yeah, no. This is so good. We're running out of time today to cover the rest of our points. Oh, we had so many points, honestly. So we good. just needed to spend a month talking with you. I know, I could too. I love it. I love it. Hey, just quickly, how would you like access to the full tutorial on this camel topic? Become a member of our Camelier Academy now and you not only get access to this camel information, but a whole library of camel information. The Camelier Academy is an online portal for camel owners and camel lovers just like you, which consists of a library of camel information, including entertaining camel vet talks and procedures, camel handling techniques and camel psychology talks, access to the latest and greatest info on camel husbandry and well-being, even workshops on how to make your own camel equipment, and of course, a forum to ask your camel questions to camel professionals. This is just a glimpse on what you'll get access to in the Camelier Academy. It's the camel flix for the camel lover. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. Come join us, our resident camel vet, and a community of camel connectors worldwide over at cameleeracademy.com. That's C-A-M-E-L-E-E-R academy.com.